Sand makes out here with over 9,000 opinions. Welcome to the video. Oh, and when you take all of this together, the books removed, then inane proclamations to shame trans athletes, these sloppy attempts to criminalize protests, and you combine it with everything else, from the support for restrictive abortion bans to the efforts to stop gender affirming care, it really begins to feel. Okay, we're gonna go through all that real quick. The books being removed. Some were hardcore porn in drawn form, like Gender Queer, the book. Some were social and emotional learning math books. And some said men can be women. Number two, inane proclamations to shame trans athletes. It's not silly or stupid, which is the definition of inane. To shame someone who thinks they are the wrong gender and takes up a spot on a sports team that goes to state, thereby removing a person from competing in state. It's not silly or stupid to shame males who want to say they are females and then dominate on the soccer field that is supposed to be a place for female competition. Number three, sloppy attempts to criminalize protests. I think John is talking about the anti-riot law that was signed in September of 2020, after the summer of riots. The following is from FloridaGov.com. The proposed legislation included new criminal offenses and increased penalties for individuals who are participants in violent or disorderly assemblies, while simultaneously guarding the constitutionally protected First Amendment right to peacefully assemble. Peaceably assemble. I'm not really defending the law, it's probably government overreach. I haven't read it, but I do support higher penalties for rioting. Because I don't really have to worry about rioting, because I won't be bashing cop cars and looting and punching people to get my point across. Jesus and Gandhi and MLK Jr. showed us the way. So, John, don't you think we should increase penalties for protesters that use bashing cop cars as their go-to. That's not sloppy, that's common sense. Number four, support for restrictive abortion bans. I really wish DeSantis had more restrictive abortion bans. Like, completely restrictive. So me and you are both disappointed uh, on this one, John. Number five, efforts to stop gender-affirming care. Oh, you mean like when 15-year-old girls are getting their breasts removed and 13-year-old boys are taking irreversible hormones throughout puberty that sterilize them while being lied to that it's like putting puberty on pause. We are sterilizing and butchering our youth and calling it gender-affirming care. We should not affirm what is not true and we should not perform irreversible sex change procedures on children. The freest state in America is only free to the extent that anyone wants to behave exactly the way that Ron DeSantis thinks they should. And look, in the months to come, you're going to hear a lot of DeSantis versus Trump comparisons. And the truth is, he'll probably come out well in a lot of them, more or less, by default. But that cannot be the bar here. It is important to consider DeSantis in his own right. If Donald Trump never existed, and let's just all pause and enjoy that hypothetical, just for a second. We'd be in big trouble if Donald Trump never existed. Ron DeSantis from scratch with no Maybe. basis for comparison. What you would see would justifiably horrify you. Because you'd be discovering a petty autocrat and a bully. A man with no interest in hearing dissent, questions, or indeed the correct pronunciation of Thai food. <laughs> and all in all, a man who is, and I do not use this term lightly, just a fucking meatball. Oh, I see. Ron is a petty autocrat and a bully, and Florida isn't a free state. Even though we all saw how Florida dealt with COVID masks and vaccine requirements. And how, uh, how can John say Ron won't answer questions or take dissent uh, when John literally played a montage of him taking and answering questions? He does this for hours at a time on a weekly basis, Ron taking questions. 
Ron DeSantis is the governor at a time when bureaucracy is so rampant that we all bathe in it every day. So I'm okay with him making good laws if our process is so corrupt and inept to do anything except tax us more. I don't think Ron is a petty... I don't think Ron is petty to get genderqueer out of schools. It's literally drawn porn. And I don't think it's petty to give a girl the first place trophy she deserves. And I don't think it's petty or autocratic to stop kids from permanently damaging their chance to reproduce. As to the bully accusation, nah. I don't see evidence of that. I do see evidence of a man who has grown tired of and has visual frustration with being lied to his face and treated dishonestly by the media for years. But John offers an alternative, a big-brained reaction to a bully and not hypocritical at all. Being a bully himself by calling Ron a meatball, proving once again that John Oliver is dishonest, poorly researched, unfunny, and a political hack. Same MGTOW here with over 9,000 thank yous for watching the video.